My name is Mia. I'm 22. I was born in San Francisco. My parents are both from the Philippines. I love sewing. Well, my mom taught me to sew when I was nine. And I just learned like a lot of, my mom was just like a really great figure in my life for like, you can learn how to do stuff That's and awesome. like, you can handle it. You know, like you don't have to keep, you don't have to go somewhere, ask someone or ask some man to do it for you. Like you can learn how to do it and just do it. Um, so sewing was one of the things that she was just like, you should know how to do this. And she taught me, me. she taught my brother as well. And we both like sew like a bunch of our clothes and things like that. Um, so she taught me how to sew and then I was sewing and typically when you start sewing, you like get fabric from like Joann's or something and you buy it by the yard. And because I started sewing when I was in like middle school, I was like, oh, fabric's kind of expensive. Like I don't really have the money to yeah. buy fabric like that. Yeah. Um, but my dad um, introduced me to thrifting when I was really young because he, his family in the Philippines owned like a thrift store and that was like the family thing. Yeah. Um, so he was like, you should try shopping here. It's so cheap, it's That's so awesome. great. And we would go shopping and I would like buy my clothes, whatever, but then I would look at like the dresses and you know, realize that there are these huge dresses for like $7. And I was like, oh, nice. and that's yeah. way cheaper than buy the yard fabric. So that's when I kind of started like sewing with secondhand materials. But when I first got to UF, I was public health on a pre-med track. Or like the, the summer after my freshman year in college, this is when I was like, I don't want to be a doctor <laughs> um, and like trying to change my major and kind of just like realizing that I stopped doing a lot of my hobbies for school when I was like in high school um, and it kind of just like became really devalued like I was very like pushed towards STEM and like you just have to get good grades and like that's what's important and all yeah. this other stuff is just like a waste of time. So when I was changing my major, I was like, okay, it's not a waste of time. I'm gonna do something with it. I double majored in marketing and sustainability studies and I was just like, I wanna study sustainability. Like out of nowhere, like I literally had no prior experience uh, and it worked out. So yeah, I'm glad that I had like that, <laughs> that just like, intuition, I guess, to do that. And, um, and throughout that whole period in between, I had been like sewing for myself, um, but I was never really like sharing it. I was never really thinking about like selling it or actually trying to do something with it. Um, so that summer I made the Instagram. I had re- The summer, like first year of college? First year of college, yeah. Awesome. Um, I came up with redefined goods and just like a half asleep fever dream. I was just like, oh, that kind of makes sense. Um, and then I started selling like women's tube top skirt sets made out of men's shirts, um, which was really fun. Uh, started doing that and then after making the women's sets for a while, that's when I realized like, oh, I kind of want to make stuff for like more people. Like I don't want to be making these really specific like mm -hmm. women's tube top sets. Um, and then I had like a break in between classes one day and made a tote. Um, but yeah, I mean, the mission kind of started off as just like, for me, like figure out what you like to do that's like outside of what you're told that you should like to do or that what is like, worth it for you to do um, and then it kind of became just like a, a puzzle that I could the puzzle of like having so much waste in the world and the little solution that I could do of like making it into something that's useful again awesome. you know back when I was first starting I feel like there were a lot less of those like brands around sustainability um, or more so less like straight up repurposing brands you know like there were like the sustainable like fancy stores with all the like zero waste stuff but there wasn't just like I made this out of a pair of jeans other than like you know like the moms and grandmas that were like pioneers of this shit like I came into this from the sustainability side and like I'm familiar with all of the nuances of like how people feel about sustainability and how that impacts how sustainability is actually used or like applied. Um, so 
yeah, definitely part of what I want to do is make things. Like, I want to make stuff that like is accessible, mm -hmm. you know, and I don't want people to like see the stuff that I'm making that's like out of secondhand materials and see that it's too expensive and then associate sustainable products or sustainability with being expensive. You know, yeah. like I feel like that kind of just defeats the purpose. It just makes this really weird like the whole purpose of sustainability, like if it's going to be effective, my pookie. In order for sustainability to be effective, it has to be applicable to the masses. You know, yeah. like it can't just be like the top whatever percent that can afford to be sustainable. And I've reached this weird crossroads of like, I want to, like I've been like constantly pushed to like make pieces that are more expensive. And there are a lot of brands out there doing stuff that's really similar to what I'm doing, but the price tag is just like up there, you know? Yeah. And on one side, I think that, you know, like you should be valuing your work for what it's worth. And if you're putting a lot of work into it, then that should be what is paid for it. Yeah, for sure. But at the same time, within sustainability, there is this weird, kind of like classism aspect where, okay, that's great. You're making this stuff out of secondhand materials. I actually want to be picked up. It's just like, okay, um, you know, we make things out of secondhand materials. That's really great. But in order to participate as a shopper, yeah. you need to pay this price tag that like, you know, I make a decent amount of money and I don't really want to pay that. I mean, I can't really like speak for other sustainable brands, but like from what I've seen online, um, you know, like it's, we use secondhand materials, but a lot of the time it is like, it's like the swimsuits that are made out of recycled plastic bottles where it's just like, that's great, but there's still a lot of steps mm -hmm. involved in creating that fabric that you then make into swimsuits and then there's probably waste from that fabric as well. Yeah. So because I work with secondhand materials, I like, instead of thinking of the product and then making, and then finding the materials, I find the materials that are like the most accessible or that I see are like, that there's just clearly an excess of and I figure out what to make exactly. out of them. Yeah. That's awesome. So like, for example, like the, I'm making so much denim stuff right now and I have all this denim because one of my friends is like a vintage reseller and he thrifts vintage jeans and cuts them into shorts. And then he's like, I have all these freaking pant legs. So yeah, yeah, so I like kind of, I try to work like that. And um, I'm actually starting to make some swimsuits and I just thrifted swimsuits and it's swimsuit fabric, which is like pretty expensive to buy. Exactly. Um, but there's so many freaking swimsuits at the thrift store. That's so awesome. yeah, my main focus was tote bags. Um, it's like a denim bottom, whatever materials I can find for the body. Coffee bags, I was using a lot of like home textiles, like, um, like bedding, curtains. Um, I just found that that like, originally I was using, or I made the first one out of a men's shirt, um, which is great, but when I would like go to the thrift store all the time, there would just always be like an overflowing home section because that's just like one of the areas that's people go to even less. Yeah, thrift less of. Thrift less of, and then it's like literally just bolts of fabric basically. So it's so easy for me to work with. So that was another thing of just like, oh, like there's so much of this, I can just use this. Mm. Sometimes people give me stuff. They're just like, hey, I found this fabric at my house. Awesome. Thrifting. Project. Repurpose project I've gotten because they have like the little fabric scrap section. So it was always fun to see like what so weird little there. stuff I could find. Mm -hmm. I usually see what comes in first. Um, so, I mean, like for example, this bag that's like, oop, in process. Mm -hmm. It's nice. just like a denim patchwork bag. Okay. Yeah, I cut them into squares. Um, and then just sewed them together in awesome. this patchwork design. But yeah, like it starts off because I'm like, oh my God, I have so much denim. What am I gonna do with all of this denim? I like roughly sketch, but I'm, I'm like a, I just cut. Improv gal, yeah. You know, like I've been sewing for what, like 
over 10 years, like I can cut a straight line, no yeah. problem. So I can like, like, oh, I want a square. I'm just like, okay, yeah, cut a square yeah. out. Yeah. So, um, it's very much like design as I go a lot of the time. Definitely like material first with the goal of using it up. It's my sustainability is showing. <laughs> I save everything. That's awesome. Um, so yeah, I was just like kind of, and actually that's how I first came up with the whole patchwork thing because um, so I use like this is always what the bottom of the bags looks like awesome. and when I cut out this part there is like some weird shaped denim pieces after and I would save them and then I was like okay how can I use them um, so that's when I first came up with the like patchwork because I can like cut squares yeah. out of whatever weird shape and then just accumulate squares and then use them however That's I awesome. want. Bulls and I just like literally just like laid the piece out, cut out as many random pieces as I could and then piece them together however they like kind of naturally fit. I have a website. Um, so I post them on the website. I, there was a period of time where I was doing a lot of markets um, and I still like doing those. I'll probably do more of those. I would do the How Bazaar and then the Florida Vintage Market and I think I've done like the flashbacks market. The market scene in Gainesville has just like completely blown up since I've started doing this. Yeah, the fact that it like has literally come to be in the past couple years is really crazy. Yeah, because when I first started, like I didn't really have like friends doing the same thing. Um, you know, I didn't really have anyone to talk to. Whereas now it's like, I feel like I'm like, I know all of Yeah, and it's like, I go to the markets and I'm just like stopping by all the booths to say hi. I've had some help on and off, but it has mostly been just me. And right now it's just me. Nice. And I think I'm managing well, especially now it's like more chill. Mm -hmm. And I think that for a while I felt like, you know, I'd feel really overwhelmed by it, my college experience, and like specifically my last year of college, I was like doing redefined goods. I like started working at Opus, and I did my yoga teacher training. Definitely became like it was like my job. Like a chore. Yeah. yeah, it was a chore, and then I was like, it was great when I was my like main job, like when I was a student, and then once I started working full time, and I was like, oh, so I'm working like the fullest possible time yeah. because I work full time, and then I come home and keep working. So, and then I kind of realized like oh, I make all the decisions. Yeah. Like, <laughs> if I want to, like, take a break and rest, then I take a break and rest. So that's what I've been doing. I love sewing, and now it's like I feel like I can do it for fun again, mm -hmm. which has been really nice. A part of the enjoyment of sewing and just, like, creating is, you know, like, the, the start and then the resolution of, like, finishing a piece. Mm -hmm. um, and then once it's kind of like for profit, you're obviously trying to make it as efficient as possible. So I made it an assembly line. I would like cut everything. And then the next day I would like do this one step. And then the next day I would do this next step. And it would just like completely suck out that, you know, like the little satisfaction of like a job well done. It kind of just became like this massive task that I'm just like, working away at until I finish them. And then I'm like, well, now I have to sell them in like two days. Yeah. Yeah. I think right now I'm in, I'm in nine to five work mode, big girl <laughs> mode, but I definitely foresee, foresee my career in like society as being kind of on and off in terms of like having an office job. Like yeah. I definitely hope to be able to like, you know, work for a while, enjoy the stability, enjoy relaxing and then in between this job and my next job, I wanna like take some time to like work on like my stuff again. Yeah. Because I definitely like, in this period, I've had so many ideas and like so many directions that I'm like, oh, like redefined goods could go in here or like we could do this or like, yeah. but I just don't really feel like I have the time, um, which used to stress me out, but now I'm like, I don't, I can just write it down. Yeah. You know, like I have my whole, yeah, I have my whole life. Like I don't have to like try to do everything right now. Sustainability has taught me to live in a way that I'm just happier living that way. And I think I wouldn't have really tried a lot of the things that 
I enjoy had I not come from the place of like, okay, how can I use less? And I think I also try to communicate that like the things that I really enjoy about life and things that I think are like, you know, like the best things in life are free slash really cheap. Like biking, love biking so much. Yeah. Just started kayaking, feel like it's gonna be Sick. a thing. Oh, it's yeah. so fun. Down the springs, yeah. You know, coming to this conclusion, like partially, um, you know, like you can sit outside in the sun for free, but also it is like, it can be such a profound experience to sit outside in the sun for free because it's like, you know, kind of that like everything that you need is like here, yeah. you know, like you don't have to, you don't have to grind for it, you know, like it's there. And so, yeah, it's so interesting. And I feel like something that I always want to have in my life is the ability to see the beauty in like, everything yeah yeah so i think that those are some values that i definitely try to like That's imbue awesome. and communicate not to be so cynical but it's like i know that me riding my bike and me like bringing my little tupperware isn't going to save the world mm -hmm. um but it's definitely a step and within your own life one act will introduce you to more yeah and it'll kind of just be like a cascade effect and yeah like I feel like that's been a big conversation of like why does it even matter because these like huge companies are doing this and it's like but like also it's your experience like mm -hmm. how do you want to feel about your impact and like that will play a big role 